It's tonight's graduation commencement exercises for the class of 2018. I know some of you are exhausted and some exhausted did not show up today just because, hey, they put so much out into a wonderful celebration. We want to offer congratulations to those classmates who have done an exceptional job receiving doctorates of religious studies, masters religious study, as well as a bachelor in religious studies. And we're excited about the upcoming classes that are forming now for our 2019 graduation. And know that you are all welcome to join and enroll in Emerson Theological Institute. Now you may say, wait a minute, I don't know if this is really for me. I don't know if I, uh, you know, I wanna be a minister. That's not really what I need. I, I, I just would like to have some, a higher understanding, a stronger faith. Well, welcome because classes are available to everyone. It need not be that you are directed to be a pastor, clergy, but know that these classes are available for everyone helping you to come to a higher level of understanding because we know our faith is only as strong as our level of understanding. If we don't understand, if we don't get it, if we don't comprehend, we don't really know, how can we be people of great faith? And this is what we're called to be. People are demonstrating faith every day, faith that moves mountains. So if you want to learn how to do that, come on, join us in some of our classes. We've got an exciting outlay of classes coming up for the fall as well. We'll be adding some more, but you'll find the listing in your bulletin. Know that you can audit the classes, but as long as you're coming, why not take them for credit? Doesn't the name doctor sound really good in front of your name? I can see it now. Each one of you, when I ask, is there a doctor in the house? I'd like to see 100% hands going up. Everybody's saying, yes, I have my doctorate in metaphysical studies and new thought, and I understand uh, spiritual truth to the highest level. So we're delighted to know that in this congregation, people uh, last night mentioned to me, I didn't know there were so many doctors that went to church here. And uh, they were thinking, okay, there's medical doctors galore. We're just doctors of great understanding and higher truth. And we love that as we celebrate together. Now, there was a teacher who wanted to explain and inspire the class. So she began to share mathematical insights and to make it very simple, she turned to the students and said, if I give you two cats and another two cats and another two cats, how many will you have? And Johnny raised and said, I'll have seven. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. If I give you two cats and another two cats and another two cats, how many cats will you have? We're gonna have seven. Now, uh, Johnny, uh, teacher said, I, I got to work with you a little bit here. I'm going to help you to think. I'm going to really work with you to help you think this through. So how about we put it a little differently. If I give you two apples and another two apples and another two apples, how many apples will you have? Six. Oh, good, Johnny, you've got it. I understand. Now let's go back. So if I give you two cats and another two cats and another two cats, how many will you have? Seven. Johnny. What's going on? Johnny, what's going on here? How do you get seven? I said, because I already have a cat. <laughs> Teacher's trying to make you think. And let me tell you this, that one of the great things that any pastor can do is to help stimulate, get you in the mode of thinking. Learning to think in ways that are very productive. It's a pastor's dream to have a thinking congregation. Now, that may be contrary to some things that you've heard in growing up in religious traditions that maybe, you know, churches are non-thinking bodies. Don't think, let the pastor think for you. Don't think, let the priest tell you what to think. But in this environment here, we are engaging in an experience that is full of active thought, active thinking, contemplation, meditation, constantly thinking in ways that are creative for our lives. For learning how to think is learning how to live. Learning how to think is learning how to live. Now, I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'm here to tell you and inspire you, encourage you to be someone who is a thinker. For as you learn to think, you learn how to live. Now, this is a very a spiritual concept found within the word of God and echoed down through the ages from Old Testament text to New that as we think, so we are, we see throughout the scriptures. And today's text that says, I remember the days of old, I meditate on your doings, meditate on God's doings. My thoughts are your works, my thoughts dwelling, meditating, resting in the very works of God. I contemplate, I think about the work of your hands. We're inspiring you today to think about productive thinking, 
to contemplate what it is like to have productive thoughts at work within our lives. That how beautiful it is that we become productive in our consciousness. That thinks in ways that are taking us to our highest and best. Everybody ready to go higher and higher? That's our theme this year. You find it on the cover of your bulletin. I didn't see very many hands going up, so let's try that again. Everybody ready to go higher and higher? Let's see some hands going up. All right, because that's our goal, moving up uh, from one plateau to the next. Not stuck, but ever growing, ever maturing, ever learning to receive ever learning how to be the very best that we can. Because how to think is found in understanding God. God, that divine source, that infinite intelligence that invites us to think in ways that are infinite. Scripture says in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 28, in God I live and move and have my being. What a powerful text that is. I love that passage. In God I live. Where are you living? In the divine presence. What do we sing today? In the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, love and peace. What happens there? Troubles vanish. Hearts are mended. This is what we do. We live in the divine presence. We live in dwelling within the consciousness. A productive way of thinking every day is about living in the realm of God. Living in this divine presence that is the kingdom of heaven. The other day, someone knocked on my door and asked, have you uh, accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Are you ready to go to heaven? I said, I've been to heaven today. How about you? I've already been to heaven. Oh, wow, what? They were so startled at my thoughts. I said, the kingdom of God is here and now. The presence of the divine is with us in this moment. Every single day, we're called to live and dwell in the heavenly realm. I've been with God. I have walked in that wonderful divine presence. I have had my devotional time of a beautiful experience of communication, of of just meditating and dwelling in this divine presence. I've been to heaven today, and I hope you have been too. See, we're surrounded by this infinite mind then that we call God, the God that is all-knowing and omniscient. Now, we're surrounded by it. So when we think about it, God before us, God beside us, God behind us, God all around us. Wow, this then helps us be people who are productive in thought. Every thought then says, I know everywhere I go, God is going before me. I know everywhere I go, God is behind me. I know that everywhere I go, God is walking along with me. The divine presence is there for it is dwelling within me at all times. So suddenly our thought processes change when we realize in the midst of any challenge, I'm in the midst of the divine. I'm in, surrounded by this infinite mind. Infinite mind may sound kind of strange to describe God because that may be a term that some are not familiar with. But what is mind but intelligence? Infinite intelligence. God knows everything. God is the infinite intelligence of this world. And this powerful intelligence reacts to every thought you share according to the law. Let's break that down because God is waiting for you to make choices. How many remember last Sunday's talk when I shared with you about the power of making choice? How crucial it is that we are people of choice and we make these choices on a daily basis. The Spirit of God is simply waiting for you what will you choose? What will you choose? What have you chosen today? Because that free will has been given to us. Otherwise, if God made all the choices for us, decided everything for us, where's our will? Where's our ability to choose? How is it engaged? But the Spirit of God is waiting for you. What will you choose? Now, God knows the desires of our heart before we even ask, but waiting, which desire, what is it you want? Because quite often we put out diversity in our desires. I want to be successful. Oh, I'm afraid. I don't think I can. I want to do this. Oh, but I don't know if it's possible. I want to believe for the miraculous. But oh, you know, I just don't have that kind of faith. You see, we put out all these different messages in thought. And God is waiting to respond. What is it you want? Do you want this? Do you want that? Where are you going? Are you going here? Are you going there? I know the desires and I'm ready to go and meet and provide for you whatever it is that you're expressing. And unfortunately, quite often we're expressing things that we don't really desire. Yet the law, God the law, God of promises is at work that says what you sow you reap. And every time you sow something, every time you plant a seed, you will reap it. 
thought are these wonderful seeds that you're planting in the world around you. You're planting these wonderful seeds that are ready to bring forth and harvest. But be careful what you may plant. It may be not exactly what you want. One of my neighbor boys said, I love dandelion flowers. I love walking around in them. And his parents were like, no, 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 because he would pick those dandelion puffs, all those little white seeds, blow them all across their yard, all across their lawn, and say, oh, I love picking up dandelions, and I'm going to bring them home, and I'm going to blow these wonderful seeds everywhere. And mom and dad are going, don't you realize, ah, you're planting seeds. We don't want a harvest of dandelions in our yard that sometimes we don't realize. And I'm going to tell you this, no matter whether you realize it or not, the promises of God, the law of God, is at work, whether you realize it or not. So you can claim all the ignorance you want and say, I didn't realize that every time I said, I can't, the Spirit of God was saying, okay, I realize you're saying you can't, and I'll go along with you, because that's your choice. You said it's not possible. You said you can't do it. You said it's not going to work out for you. You've already explained that. You've claimed that. You've shared that. You've confessed that. If that's what you confess, that's what I know that you want. That's the desire of your heart then. Ooh, be careful what we express, what we're thinking, because we want to make sure that our thoughts are working with, with the creative power of the universe to our advantage. So are we choosing productive thinking? Are we thinking in ways that are productive? So what we want to make sure is that we understand that we don't waste the power of our thoughts. Don't waste it. Because the Spirit of God is in connection with you. God is listening to every thought. Thoughts, we would say, well, wait a minute, I kept them in mind. But remember, God is with us within and knows the very thoughts of your heart, the very intentions and desires. So please, don't waste your time thinking in ways that are contrary to that which you truly desire for your highest and best. So God knows those desires and what you think about, you bring about. So fear, failure, those kind of things, or success and prosperity are yours. King Saul in the Old Testament is a beautiful example as he began to contemplate and think about David. David, the young man coming up into the kingdom. David, this new star rising. And what did he begin to think and thoughts that began to flow through his mind was, oh, you know what, I'm worried about David. What if David rises up and takes my kingdom from me? People love David more than they love me. Now I'm feeling insecure. And all of a sudden I'm afraid that one day he may be the one to overthrow my kingdom. He may take over my kingdom. And what happened? Who ended up becoming king? David. You see, the thought process sets in motion within our lives. How about those spies who went in to survey the promised land, sent ahead to check it all out before the children of Israel were ready to move in and they came to look at it and say, oh, we saw milk and honey. We saw all kinds of wonderful things. We saw abundance. We saw blessing. But there were giants. There were problems. There were things that seemed to be too great. And we can't do this. And what happens? Those thoughts Those ideas created an environment where the children of Israel did not go in and possess the promised land. So it is, we find that the Roman soldier who came to Jesus and said to Jesus, you just need to say the word because I know that if you say the word, my beloved servant will be healed. Coming to Jesus and saying, you don't even need to come to my house. You don't need to travel here. I know in my thought, my consciousness is My awareness is that you already know the desire of my heart. And Jesus, you just say the word and I know it's done. Because as you speak the word of faith, as you speak the word believing, I know it will be accomplished. It's that kind of, and so it is thinking. We say, and so it is here at City of Light a lot. And so it is. People sign off their emails or sign off their Facebook postings. And so it is. What are we saying? We're saying amen. What are we saying when we say amen? We're saying, and so it is. We're saying it's done. It's finished. We believe it. Our consciousness, our thoughts are saying, we've turned it all over to God. God knows. God's at work. God's making the way when there seems to be no way. I know this. And so I just say, and so it is. That which I've spoken, that which I've proclaimed, that which I've held in thought over and over again is, and so it is, it's done. Your healing, and so it is. Your financial blessing, 
and so it is. We're holding in consciousness your success, and so it is. We know as we claim for each and every one the highest and best, we just simply release this thought that says, and so it is. It's done. It's finished. God's at work. We don't need to wrestle plead, beg, beseech, storm the gates of heaven over and over again when we have this kind of faith that says, my thought, my very consciousness, my very idea is that the divine is at work within me at all times. So when we understand this, we become productive thinkers that we know that wherever we are, God is. And wherever God is, you are. Here, now, in this moment, God is in this presence. God is in this room. We are in the presence of Jehovah, as we sang earlier. God Almighty, love and peace. We're in that wonderful presence. In fact, we should live each and every day with this kind of consciousness that changes the way we think to be very productive. As Moses came before the burning bush, symbolizing the divine presence, the Spirit of God spoke to Moses and said, you need to take your shoes off. Take off your sandals. This is holy ground. Now, I'm not advocating that we all walk around barefoot, although there's nothing wrong with that, and it has some health benefits to us. But I am advocating that we take off those barriers that keep us feeling truly grounded in an awareness that the divine presence is here, now, in this place, in this moment. So wherever you're placing your feet, it's holy ground. You're walking to work, it's holy ground. You're walking at the gym, it's holy ground. You're on the treadmill and it's holy ground. Everywhere you go, it's holy ground. You're walking home and it's holy ground. You're going to the store and it's holy ground. You're at the grocery store and it's holy ground. You're at the club or the bar and it too is holy ground. Yes, that's true. When we realize that the divine presence is with us wherever we go, we have this consciousness, productive thinking that says, I remove any barrier knowing that this is sacred. God is with me wherever I am. And so then, with that kind of thinking, we move with God, and God goes with us. We go, we move, we interact every single moment of our life. So our thoughts change. I don't need to be afraid. God is with me. God is going before me. I don't need to have any kind of stress or fear or worry about my circumstances, because I know God is for me, with me, around me, and here and now in my presence. This is the presence of God where I stand. So I strip away those barriers. I strip away those sandals or shoes. Did you know the phrase goodbye was actually God be with you? It started out that way. In fact, in the original saying when, when you departed from someone wasn't goodbye or now it's just bye and there's even not any good or now it's just but you know, hey, hey, you know, and we moved away from it. We've shortened it and shortened it and shortened it and shortened it. But its original expression was God be with you with the connotation that God is with you. So when you are leaving the presence of one another, because what do we know? Where two or three are gathered together, we're in the presence, correct? There is an acknowledgement when I'm with you. I'm in the presence of God, for the God in you is with the God in me. Our presence is connecting this wonderful sense of Holy Spirit and presence together. So when we leave and we say, we just say, God be with you as you leave my presence, but the presence of God is going with you. So goodbye meant God be with you, shortened then to good be with you, because what is God? God is good all the time. God is good. God is good all the time, all the time God is good. When we understand that, we understand that what we're saying is good be with you. The God of goodness go with you wherever you go. So good by is simply this wonderful blessing and should be a calling and awareness to our thinking that I'm continuing to walk, leave, travel, go into new places, but God is with me making a way at all times. And I'm bringing this thought with me I'm carrying this thought with me. This is how I'm very you can be very productive in your thinking because you know that you're carrying with you the divine awareness as you leave any space, as you leave any place, as you leave the presence of one another, as you leave the company of good friends or family, the presence of God and that love of God is going with you. So the question is, what do you bring with you? You know, as a little kid, my mother, pastor's wife, had a fabulous purse 
I always was intrigued with her purse. Not that I'm into purses that much, but I intrigued with my mother's purse. Why? Because my mother's purse had everything that I need. As a little child going to church, you know how you get a little restless as kids, you know? My mother would open up that purse and she'd pull out crackers. Like, wow, there's crackers in my mother's purse. And then sometimes it wasn't crackers, sometimes there's peppermint. Here, take this. She'd open up, sometimes a little candy. Oh, I love that purse. It had candy, it had crackers, it had a buffet going on inside her purse. I mean, sometimes she would say, here, take this little flip uh, notepad here and draw some pictures. And there was a pen in her purse as well. There was arts and crafts and food and a buffet. I mean, as a kid, I just thought, wow, what is in that purse? Everything I need is in that purse. Now, what if we walked with that kind of consciousness every day? That we're carrying the purse of God and everything we need is right there. You just open it up. And that's a productive way of thinking. I know that everything I need is already there. I don't need to worry, stress, and walk in fear or any kind of concern for the challenges of the day because the purse of God, that divine unfolding is there for me. I just need to open it up and there's going to be a buffet of blessings there for you. There will be arts and crafts for you to be creative. There'll be all those kind of things unfolding in beautiful ways for your life. Now, productive thinking requires a key element, and that is a simple acknowledgement. You have to begin when you're thinking and aligning your thoughts in a productive way. Learning how to think begins with acknowledging this goodness of God. We have to take time to acknowledge. God is good, we say this, but to acknowledge it in a powerful way. The Lord's Prayer, which we sang earlier in today's service here, says, our Creator, who art in heaven, Holy is your name. Holy is your character. Holy is your essence. Everything about it. It's a beautiful statement of acknowledgement. Sometimes we don't do enough acknowledging of what we see, what we desire, what we experience. We don't even acknowledge the good in one another. And, you know, this is one of the beautiful things that we need to do more frequently is to turn to someone and say, you look fabulous. I acknowledge you look really great. I acknowledge the love of God in you. Let's do that right now. Turn to someone and say, I acknowledge the love of God in you. I acknowledge it. I see it. I see it at work. You look fabulous. Someone else. I acknowledge that you are, you're talented. I acknowledge your gifts. I acknowledge your presence. I acknowledge you being here. Because a lot of times we walk away and we wonder, did you even acknowledge anything? Did you know it was there? You know? The other day, Robert said to me, you went to the gym. Who was there? And I said, well, you know, I don't know. I don't know who was there. You went to the gym and you didn't see anybody? I said, I was so focused on getting into the gym and getting my workout, I didn't acknowledge. I didn't say hello. I didn't greet anybody. I didn't pay any attention to anybody. I, I couldn't even tell you. You don't remember? Uh, well, was there, you know, uh, this person or that person? Was there someone older or younger? Was, was there any eye candy? Uh, was there anything there? You know, and I... I don't know. I was so focused, I didn't acknowledge. And so one of the most important things that we have to do in productive thinking is first acknowledge this divine awakening within our lives of the goodness of God. We need to start every day. Our creator who art in heaven, that heaven within. Our creator who is within me. Holy, divine, beautiful, amazing is your character. For your name signifies your character. Your ways are beautiful. And what was the text today that we read? It says, I meditate on all your doings, O God. My thoughts are on your works, your ways. I acknowledge them. I contemplate, I think about the work of your hands. This is the way we engage in productive thinking. Beginning to acknowledge, I see the work of of God all around me. I see the wonderful, miraculous ways. Next Sunday, we're celebrating. Oh, we got so much to celebrate. A list of activities, of things that we are grateful for. We're grateful. Look around. This is going to be our second year in this facility. And last night, all of the guests came and said, wow, you have a fabulous place. It's a beautiful. The view is so amazing. Stephanie Knight's uh, family hosted a shower for her. All of those people said, wow, aren't you grateful for what you have? Aren't you blessed? 
uh, well, we have to acknowledge, take time out to acknowledge the wonderful blessings that we have. It stimulates then a productive way of thinking because we know God has blessed us in our past. God has given us many great things. We are truly uh, gifted and blessed. And if we're gifted once and blessed, we're gifted again. Because there isn't an exhausting uh, moment to God's love or God's blessing. Said, you know what? I'm sorry, Norma. 25 years ago, God blessed you and you've used it all up and there's no more blessing for you. I'm sorry, you know. Mark, you were really blessed of God when you were a child, but no, you've used up everything. And I'm sorry, I'm going to look on the list and I've tallied up and you've reached your total, your max. In fact, you're overcharging right now. If you want anything more from God, you know, I'm sorry, you're going to have to borrow from Andrew's credits, you know. A productive thinking starts by us thinking the way God thinks. The way God thinks. Have you ever thought about it? How does God think about this situation? Have you ever thought about that? Not how does my neighbor think? How do my friends think? What do I think? What does someone else think? What does God think? So what's the intelligence of the thought process about it? That God lives and exists in such a dynamic way, ever in universal power, ever in an infinite blessing. What does God think? What would be the way to think in that way? For Philippians 2, verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Let the God thoughts be in you. Let this kind of consciousness, this way of thinking be in you. So if we're going to embrace some God thoughts for productive thinking, we're going to start thinking like God thinks. Well, I'm going to tell you this. God never thinks limited thoughts. And we in our lifetime have embraced all kinds of limitation and have thoughts that have some sort of stop moment, some sort of a limitation, some sort of barrier to them. God is never limited, so stop thinking limited thoughts. They're not of God. They're not of God. God is ever expanding. God is ever giving. God is ever blessing. God is ever working. So how can we see some sort of limitation? We in our physical mind and our physical consciousness always want to make note of appearances, of things they appear. This appears limited. You may look at your checkbook and say, this appears limited. You may call your bank account. Ooh, this appears limited. You may look at your salary and say, ooh, this looks really limited. You make kind of all those things in appearances. And what do you do in your consciousness? You just send out this message that I enjoy limitation. Because God knows the desires of your heart and your thoughts. And you keep echoing over and over again. I live in limitation. I am limited. And I like being limited. But when we change our thinking, we realize that the God of making ways when there seems to be no way is the God that's at work and we think like that. And we begin to open ourselves. How many of you are looking for unexpected income? I hope that you are every single day in your life. Unexpected income coming from unusual sources and different places because that's the way the divine works. And we may think we're limited, but when we release that kind of consciousness and we stop thinking because those thoughts are not God thoughts, we now open ourselves up to all kinds of ways of blessing coming to us because there's no energy of thought that's pushing away from us, pushing away, saying it's not possible, it's not coming to us, but we're allowing divine flow to unfold for us. The creative power is that it is so uh, desirous to flow in and through us in our lives that the thoughts of God are brought about all kinds of amazing manifestations in our life. So when we start thinking like God thinks, well, here's some examples in the Bible of what happens for our lives. How many of you know the story of David and Goliath? And David embracing God thoughts, no limitations, says, all I need is a few stones. But the world around him says, you can't go out and fight Goliath. You need heavy armor. You need a big sword. You need a bunch of weapons. Let's get some tanks. Let's get some reinforcements out there. Let's get some bombs. Let's do whatever you can. If you're going to go out this, you can't do this alone because you're too limited. David says, I don't need any of those things. God thoughts. Thinking the way God thinks. All I need is this sling and give me a stone. And he destroys Goliath. How about Daniel going before the lion's den? 
Do you think he thought, you know what? I need to make sure there's all kinds of barriers. Do I have my uh, uh, scare tactics to scare those lions away? What am I going to do? How am I going to fight them off? What will I do? You know what? Just living in this wonderful realm of knowing that there is no limitation to the divine and God is with me in the midst of my greatest fears. God is in the midst of lions and those things that may seek to devour me. God, the way maker, makes a way when there seems to be no way. And so suddenly when we begin to think and embrace this kind of thinking that's productive, we begin to say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But the key thing is, you've got to say the Lord is. You can't say, the Lord, mm, yeah, well, mm, sometimes. The Lord, mm, I don't know, you know. When we look at that word Lord, we look at that very promises of God that are at work. Sometimes we could use the word the law, the promises, the very rulings of God that say what you sow, you will reap. If you plan to sowing, you're going to reap something. You just know that. So when we understand that, we become people who really are, are, are advocates of the 23rd Psalm that says the Lord is, is, is my shepherd right now. And what is that shepherd? caregiver, lover, guide, that one who will take us to greener pastures and still waters. We're not walking in any kind of fear. This then is productive thinking. So today, I'm inviting you to learn how to think, for learning how to think is learning how to live. I want you to live in your highest and best. As your pastor, as your spiritual coach, as the one who's there saying, I know you can do it. Come on, let's think, let's think. Let's think productively. Let's release our whole world of consciousness and our way of thinking from any kind of limitation and those kind of things that say, God's not with me. God may forsake me. God may leave me. I'm all alone. There's no power and presence here. We're gonna change all that because we learn to live by a new and clear understanding of God. We live in the knowing that God is always with us, never leaves us, never leaves us. Goes with you to the grocery store, went with you to the gym, goes with you to work, came here with you to church. God is with you, in you, and working through you and around you. And we live in this productive thinking by the acknowledgement that this power is here and now, readily accessible. Not something you have to wait for, that this power and presence is something, oh, when I die, I'll experience this power and presence. When I get to heaven, when in eternity, maybe it'll happen for me, maybe sometimes further down the road, but it's here and it's now. And productive thinking also is, I live with no limits. So if you understand who, what, this divine presence is and how it works within your life and you embrace it fully, if you embrace it to this understanding that's in and round and through me, if you embrace it with, in such a way that you understand there's no limits, well, now you're thinking. Now you're thinking. Amen.